We are going to take another look at climate change on the next Good News program. You don't want to miss that. The program you're about to watch is part of a free MP3 series we're making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries entitled Carefree Living. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s for free by entering code CARE72 at checkout. Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, this is Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We are continuing our series that we've entitled Carefree Living. Carefree Living is not just the title of a series, but it can be a way of life. And I believe it's God's will for you to live a carefree, happy life. As far as God is concerned, through the, His teaching and scriptures, there's no reason for you as a child of God to be worried. You don't have to be concerned or fearful about the future. And certainly you don't have to worry about things you can't change. Turn those things over to God and quit carrying such a heavy load. You'll be happier and you'll be healthier and you'll be a greater blessing to those around you. If you'd like the study notes, we have them. Uh, they're on our website, Carefree Living Study Notes. You can find that on our homepage. You can download them or we'll mail them to you. And it's several pages of, of notes in outline form of this teaching. Uh, it'll really help you, I believe, to follow up on this and put an end to worry and fear dominating your life. You can say no to worry. You can say no to fear. And uh, it's just a choice that God has put within your heart within your power you can decide no more fear no more worry i'm going to live a happy carefree life this is the series that we're giving you you can download this also from our website go to the product page for carefree living it's a four message series if you want the cd version it's 24 dollars, and we'll mail it to you or you can download the audio version in mp3 free of charge just enter the coupon code CARE72, C-A-R-E-7-2, and you can have your uh, download f absolutely free, and you can listen to it over and over again, and a message like this, really, you just need to listen to it from time to time, because worry and those old habits will creep in, depending on what you're going through, be depending on what you're dealing with in your life, and we just need to recognize that, that we don't have to go down that road. We don't have to spend our time worrying and fearful and, and, and anxious about anything. Uh, in God's, and from God's perspective, you shouldn't be worried. You shouldn't be fearful. And uh, we gave you plenty of scriptures. They're, they're in our, our study notes, and you can catch up with, uh, with where we are if you get those. But uh, I want to come back to this issue of climate change. We literally went through one after another, uh, what I call doomsday scenarios, and, and we looked at how they've been promoted and they've been believed by people, and really it creates this climate of doom and gloom, this conditioning of unbelief and fear, and none of that's scriptural. God does not want us to be fearful, even if we live in a fear-filled world, fear-filled, filled world. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, John 14, 27, neither let it be afraid. So you don't have to come to me and say, I just don't see what you're talking about, not worrying and not being, how can you live that way? I didn't say that. I didn't tell you you had to do that. Jesus did. Tell Jesus why you should be worried. Tell Jesus that it's not possible to not be afraid. Jesus said to us, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He also said this. He said, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So there is an option for us. We do not have to be afraid and be troubled and be anxious, be angry like the people around us. We can be well-adjusted. We can be filled with joy and faith and, and be happy about life and about our future. And, and it can be completely independent of circumstances. <laughs> In Isaiah 41.10, he says, Fear not, for I'm with you. So I guess you could say it this way. As long as God is with you, you don't have to fear. So the question is, 
Is God still with you? Has God forsaken you? Has God forgotten about you? Has God left you on your own? No. Well, then you should not fear. That's not God's will for you is to fear or worry or be anxious or any of these uh, derivatives of fear. We can be free from that. Now, we were talking about climate change, and, and this is another one of those scenarios that people are using to create fear and paranoia uh, and anxiety at the very least in, in our society today. I'm not going to argue science because I'm not a scientist. Obviously, I have no business talking about science because I don't know about I, That's not my area. But I can tell you that I am into faith and I am into the Word of God. And if God's going to weigh in on the climate, then I can certainly quote God. So I know that scientists are telling us that the temperature is warming. And because of this, it's going to cause worldwide catastrophe, that the oceans are going to rise, that cities are going to be flooded, that it's going to cause problems that is going to make the world uninhabitable or mass, you know, mass, massive deaths. And, you know, I just don't buy into that. I don't believe that. Even if the temperature is rising, that doesn't mean the end of the world is near due to climate change. And I get my, my faith, my position from the Bible. Genesis 1.28, God said, While the earth remains, there will be seed time harvest, cold and heat, winter, summer, day and night shall not cease. Then we read that in, uh, in 2 Peter 3.7, it says, The heavens and the earth which are now preserved. This simply means the world has been preserved by the same word or the word of God and are reserved for fire until the judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So the end of the world is coming. There will be an end, but it's not going to be any of these doomsday scenarios. The world is preserved for God's plan and God's will. And that makes sense. If you believe in God, then you believe God created the heavens and the earth. It makes sense to believe that God's going to decide when it's over. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. That has reference to time. You know, there's no time in the spirit or in eternity. Time exists here in this natural world. And Jesus weighed in on the subject of time. He said, I'm the Alpha and I'm the Omega. We see in Revelation 21 where Jesus will clearly announce, it is finished. And did you know until Jesus says it's finished, it's not finished. People won't decide when it's over. God's going to decide that. Once you put these things in place, you have a foundation to build your life on that's not built on sinking sand. It's not so uh, f fragile. And, and that's part of where all these doomsday scenarios come from is people that don't acknowledge God. There is no absolute. They're certainly not building their lives on the foundation of God's word, which is like building on a rock. And therefore, anything could happen, anything goes, anything could happen at any time. When you don't believe in God, then you begin to believe in your own insignificance. And in, in you, you start to see yourself as a speck in this vast universe with no apparent purpose. And life could end at any moment. That's no way to live. These, these, these philosophies... All of these scenarios, all this news, all this speculation affects people. I'm trying to do my part to, to, to set the record straight, at least give people an alternative. You don't have to be afraid of the end of the world. As a Christian, we do not have to fear the end of the world. We don't have to give it a second thought. God's going to take care of us, and he's going to take care of the world until he's done. Then there's going to be some real catastrophes. Things are really going to change. We're going to get into that later. But, but the fact is, if you're a Christian, you don't have to worry one minute about the end of the world. God will take care of that. You will not. And then people say, well, you think this is God or some natural disaster happened? You think that's God? No. You can read the book of Revelation and see what God's going to do when judgment actually comes. And it is undeniable. There's not going to be anybody in that day saying, you think that was God? It'll be obvious. 
the world is eventually going to be destroyed. And it's going to be obvious that God did it. It's not going to happen gradually from pollution and man-made carbon emissions. These things are not going to ruin the planet. Now, should we be good stewards? Yes, we should. But I am concerned about what all these teachings and all of this rhetoric is doing to people. It's making people afraid and they're changing their behavior into, well, you can call it unscriptural. I've got a couple of articles that or pages of an article that I printed just for this purpose. But let me read this to you and show you what this kind of thinking is doing to people in this world that we live in. This is our generation. We're all exposed to a lot of the same things. And, and not everybody has a foundation of truth to stand on, to rest on. And I'll tell you, these, these, um, a lot of this, this, this evidence or whatever is being promoted, these scenarios that are being promoted by science and by the media are having a really terrible effect on people. Here's one, a 31-year-old elementary school teacher. This article is taken out of Bloomberg, so it's a reputable uh, paper. It says, a 31-year-old elementary school teacher says, I feel such fear and guilt and shame and sadness already. I find the loss of animals and plant life, the loss of water and air, just sad. So she's just sad and, and depressed over animals dying and air being breathed and water being used to drink and wash clothing. That makes her sad. Others are more concerned about inflicting a child or rather the emissions the child would inevitably produce on the world. In another video, a young man asked, do I really want to bring someone else into the world who's going to consume those fossil fuels? You know, people without a God would come to these conclusions, I, I understand, but it's still not right. And to think that way is unscriptural. Look, there wouldn't be a, a, a fossil fuel engines created on this planet if God hadn't given man the ability to do it. If God didn't want fossil fuels to be here, he wouldn't have put them here. God put these things, just like he put gold and silver in the ground, he provided these things to provide us energy to make life better for us. And yes, they do emit pollution. But how many of you can understand that God can factor that in? I mean, when you have a baby, you prepare for dirty diapers. Babies make a mess. They make messes, but that's factored in. You don't decide, I'm going to throw the baby away because he dirtied his diapers again. Let's get rid of the baby. We cannot tolerate dirty diapers. That's part of the process. And God Almighty created this world, this planet. He created us and he knew what we would do. He knew the carbon footprint that you would leave before he created you. And he did it anyway. He knew the carbon footprint that would be left by all the people who've ever lived. And it's okay. It's okay to burn fossil fuels. It's okay to drink water. It's okay to breathe air. And I've said this for years. If we don't watch it, these people are going to start uh, limiting how much we breathe. They're going to say, don't take a deep breath, just half breaths, because you're ruining the planet. And that's exactly what that lady said. She's sad because we're using air and water. It was put here for us to use. Do you see the, the, the effect that this is having on people is negative. It's so much easier just to believe in God. God said, as long as the earth remains, there's going to be winter, summer, cold, heat, uh, day and night. These things are not going to change. They never have. And yet they keep telling us every decade or so, it's all going to come to an end. It's all going to collapse. It's all going to be ruined. It's just not true. Listen to this group. They're responding to all this, all of these stats and all these facts and so-called and all this speculation they're responding, and it's sad. In March, the, there was a British singer who organized a group called Birth Strike. It's made up of about 600 people globally who refused to have children as a result of the climate breakdown. Now, they're calling it a climate breakdown. Other people call it climate change or global warming. Sure, the, the temperature may be rising, 
But does that mean life's going to end? The earth's getting older. There's no doubt about that. It is getting older. Things are coming to a conclusion, but God said it would. And he's not concerned about the air, and he's not concerned about the temperature. If he was, he would have told us. Notice this, Romans 8, 20 and 22 says, 20 through 22, the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself will also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. In other words, the world's been corrupted by sin. It's on its way out. It's dying a slow death, no doubt. It's getting older. The scientists have told us that the entire universe is experiencing atrophy. In other words, it's winding down like a big clock. It's winding down, not winding up. So there is this, 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 this progression to a conclusion and, and Paul says it this way, we know the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. So there are these pangs, there are these contractions, these birth pangs that are happening, they get more intense, closer together, the, fr- the closer you get to the end. That's not a surprise. God prophesied it. He said that that was what we were going to see. Not only that, it says, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the redemption, the adoption and the redemption of our bodies. So he's saying the world's getting older, your body's getting older, and we're yearning for liberation. We're yearning for a new day. And thank God, because of what Jesus did, he purchased redemption for our bodies, and he purchased redemption for all of creation. And one day, our bodies are going to be reborn, and one day, creation's going to be reborn. It's going to pass away, and God's going to make a new one. That's, that's scripturally what's going to happen in the days to come. But you can be sure that God's going to take care of you before, during, and after. He's not going to forget about us. He's not going to let us slip through his fingers. He's not going to turn his back on us. He's already factored us into the plan. He's already factored our food and clothing needs and the fact that we burn fossil fuels. I mean, listen, you could reject this whole modern life movement and say, I'm going to do my part to be conser- conserve the, the environment. And you could give up your car. You could give up your house. You could give up your utilities. You could give up all the... the all the the blessings of modern life, the conveniences of modern life, and you'd have to live in a cave somewhere, but you'd be absolutely uh, separated, isolated, neutralized from society. You would not be able to do what you're supposed to do, live life like you're supposed to live it. In this modern age, if you're going to be a part of society and live your life you're going to probably, you're going to need a place to live, a roof over your head, and you're going to need to pay utility bills and insurance, and you're probably going to need a car unless you have good public transportation. You're going to need a car to function. That's not a bad thing. We shouldn't feel guilty about these things. This is the world in which we live. God factored all that in. It's not going to ruin the world. It's not going to bring the world to a a terrible end through global warming. That's not in the Bible. Now, there is global warming in the Bible, but man didn't do it. There is a difference between man-made global warming and God-made global warming. In the end, the Bible says God's going to destroy the world by fire, but it's not going to be because we use too much gasoline or, or because we used too much electricity. That, that's not going to bring a world to an end. And the people who've bought into this, they may be well-meaning people, but they don't believe in God. They don't believe in the Bible. They're not putting the Word of God first. So, so these people, they're called birth strike. They refuse to have children. This, this person that founded this group has said that she wants to be a mother but reluctantly decided that ecological circumstances are too dire. Like the founders of Conceivable Future, there's another group called Conceivable Future, birth strike adherents don't stand for population control, but rather for calling attention to the severity of the climate crisis. As, as I said, I'm not saying that the world's not getting well. I don't know it's getting warmer or not but i know this it's going to last until god's done with it nobody can stop that let me give you this scripture in light of those 
God said this in, uh, in Genesis, if I can find it. In Genesis 1.28, God said this to Adam and Eve, the original people on earth that he created. He said, then God blessed him and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. That doesn't sound like population control. That doesn't sound like zero population growth. There is one group that we read about in another uh, program that wants human extinction. Well, that's exactly opposite to what God said. God told human beings to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Oh, and by the way, subdue it. In other words, take dominion, build houses, develop land, become, uh, become societies, towns, cities, states. He wanted us to do what we're doing. So any movement that tries to stop us from doing that is anti-scriptural, anti-God. It's not God's plan. And what they try to do to get everybody to cooperate is get us to be is, is to get us in fear, to be afraid of the end of the world, to be afraid of what's coming. And uh, it's kind of like uh, it says in, in, in Proverbs, the wicked flee when no man pursues but the righteous are bold as a lion. If you're a child of God today, you're the righteousness of God. You have a right to be here on this planet. You have a right to take up space. You have a right to eat food and to use clothing and to use modern conveniences to get your needs met. You have a right to believe for those things and to use those things without guilt. I can't allow people to put a guilt trip on me just for being born, just for being a, a person. We're here because God wanted us to be here. We have life because God gave us life. The best thing we can do is not look for problems that aren't there and try to solve problems that don't exist. The best thing we could do is find this God who created us and find out what he wants. Is there anything I can do for him? How, do, how can I say thank you to my creator for allowing me to live? And his, 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 his uh, requirements are so easy. He wants us to be thankful and he's adamant about us not being afraid. Being afraid is like saying God's not going to be able. He may have created the world, but he can't keep it. He can't sustain it. God created me, but he can't protect me. God created me, but he can't feed me. These are anti-scripturalists, this unbelief, and you don't have to go there. You don't have to take another thought and worry about your well-being. God will take care of you. God will protect you. God will provide for you. Isn't that good to know? I'll tell you, I'm not going to spend time, uh, you know, rolling around you know, at night and unable to sleep because of fear of the things that may or may not be coming on the earth. God's going to take care of us. I want to take you to another psalm that I love that puts this all in perspective. It's Psalm 95, verses 4 through 6. It says, In his hand, this is God, are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land. That kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? God created the hills. He created the sea. You could expand it to say he created the air, air the atmosphere. He created the fossil fuels. God created this whole world. And it says, let us worship and bow down rather than be afraid and, and fear things that may or may not ever happen that aren't really happening. Rather than do that, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. That's a much better attitude to have in these end times is to trust God and kneel before the Lord your maker. Here's another promise that lets us know that we don't have to worry about anything happening between now and the end that's going to stop life on this planet. These are all just speculation. They're all just doomsday scenarios, and they really just bring fear into unsuspecting people. No, no need to give in to that. Notice this. This is Matthew 24, verses 37 through 39. As the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. 
As in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. What does that mean? That means that things are going to continue fairly normally until the end. It doesn't say anything about global climate change and global catastrophe. It doesn't say anything about the ozone layer being depleted and everybody burning alive. It doesn't say we ran out of food and water. It says things will continue as normal until the time of the end. The most important thing we can do right now is live for God, is love God and enjoy the one life that God's given us to live. Let's be thankful by being full of faith and full of expectancy that, that the God who created us is well able to take care of us until all this is over. You don't have to be afraid. Just get happy and serve God. Amen. Well, I'm going to continue this teaching in our next session. Uh, we've run out of time today, but until next time, may God's best be yours. In this new series, you'll learn from the scriptures why worry is not an option and how to replace fear with faith in the midst of any trial. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s for free by entering code CARE72 at checkout. If you hadn't gotten my new book yet, you should consider getting this book, Living With No Regrets. I believe this is some of the most uh, applicable, important teaching I've ever done. People are buying the book and we're getting really good response. It simply helps every person deal with the past. If you have things in your past that you regret, maybe there are things that you wish you hadn't done that you did, or things you wish you had have done that you wish you didn't do, that causes regret. And Jesus can wipe away every tear of regret in your life. God wants you to be happy. He wants to set us free so that we can go into our future with no strings attached. This book will tell you all about it, even give you scriptures that apply to the areas that you need help in, and I'll give you some homework so that you can apply the scriptures to your own life and experience total freedom from anything and everything that's ever happened to you. You're gonna love this book. Get ready to get happy and get your copy today. Sorrow, sadness, guilt, and shame are not God's will for your life. In his new book, learn how to apply God's word to your past and allow him to wipe away every tear so you can experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. Get your copy of Greg's new book, Living With No Regrets, on our website, gregfritz.org. We're going to talk about the end of the world. And so, but let me preface all that by saying there's nothing for you to worry about. We'll talk about what's going to happen. And, 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 but before we do, there is nothing for you as a child of God to worry about. God's gonna take care of you. And I know we know that in theory, but it's actually true. God is going to take care of you till the very end. He'll never let go of you. He'll never turn his back on you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. So you have nothing to worry about. Join us next time for Good News with Greg Fritz.